What's going on guys, welcome back to Kobe Sneaks. Today we're looking at the brand new Yeezy Boost 350 version 2 in the sesame colorway. Okay, so before we get into the unboxing and review of the shoes, we have to do two things for me and for you. Number one is we need to remove ourselves from the hype or the, the stock numbers and things like that surrounding these shoes because a lot of the time people say, I don't like that shoe just because there's too many out there or the hype isn't real. And then number two, we need to separate the shoe from the artist and this time this is Kanye. In recent months, we've seen Kanye come up with a bunch of propaganda and things that some people do not agree with, and they've had that influence what he's doing as an artist towards shoes, but really, those are two very distinct things. We need to look at these shoes as a sole, no pun intended, as a sole entity of fashion, as a singular thing in fashion, as a singular shoe. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the unboxing. So as you can see on the box here, we have the classic 350 branding on top and then the classic boost branding on the side on the side of the box here we have the yeezy boost 350 version 2 model name i got a size 11 and a half because i sized a half size up for these shoes i did get the size 11 but they were really really snug so i went back and got the 11 and a half instead the model number for these shoes is f99710 and then the colorway of course is just sesame all right let's go ahead and open the box here Perfect. And here is the shoe. Alright, so these shoes here, they arrived on the market on November 23rd, Black Friday in the US, well pretty much around the world now, but Black Friday, and they retail for a price of $220 US, or up here in Canada, $300 Canadian. Now, if we start with the upper of these shoes, we see that the upper is comprised of the classic prime knit material that all Yeezys have been comprised of since the version 1. Along the middle of the shoe line here, we have the classic box and X stitching from the toe box all the way up to the continuous tongue area. And the prime knit of these shoes is kind of a fusion between gray and a really light brown. Like I'm not sure if this is supposed to be the part of the shoe that's the sesame color, but anyways, this area is kind of like a gray and light brown color. And then unlike most 350 version 2s on the side here, we do not have any SPLY 350 branding or any distinctive color uh, stripe there. This is just a continual block of the same color primate all the way around. The laces on these shoes are a rope style lace. They're really, really thick, the same as all your other V2 laces, and they are an exact matching color to the prime knit light gray brown. The heel area of the prime knit also features that X and box style stitching, and then the classic heel pull that's made more out of a thick canvas material, again, the exact same color as the prime knit. Now looking at the insole of the shoe, the insole of the shoe is pretty thin, just like all other V2s, there's not much support, and in fact, if these shoes are a bit too snug on your feet, a lot of people just take the insole out because the real support on your foot is from the boost technology on the sole. We'll get to that in a second. But the insole these doesn't really do much for your feet at all. But the insole does just have the Adidas Yeezy branding and again done in that same light gray brown colorway. And then on the inside of the heel area here, you have the Adidas three stripe branding with quite a bit of padding around the heel area, not only on the back, but also on the sides. So if we look at the midsole of these shoes, we see that it is done in the classic astronaut moon boot ribs style tire finishing again it is a rubber finish but this time it's in a light cream colorway in contrast to the light gray brown of the prime knit but in contrast to that the outsole of the shoe has a gum outsole which also extends to the toe box and the heel the outsole of the shoe also features an exposed cage design with an exposed triangle showing you the boost soul technology and then just a little bottom branding portion there that says boost so that was a detailed look at this shoe let's see what it looks on feet in action
Now I gotta say, after wearing these for a whole day, the quality of the sesames compared to every other V2 or V1 that I've worn is, in my opinion, a lot higher. And I thought this the moment I stepped into it, but then I read more online, and I also saw that a lot of people thought the same thing. The quality of the prime it, of the boost, of just the whole construction and craftsmanship of this V2 seems a lot higher than previous versions. And then hopefully what this equates to is a more comfortable experience for the user and a longer lifespan. Now, I want to talk about why these shoes, why this colorway in particular, got so much hype when it was first announced. If we think back to the version 1 350s, two of the most popular colorways were the Oxford Tan and the Moon Rock colorways because they were so neutral, but they weren't just black or just white or just gray. They were a neutral earth tone that kind of went with everything that was in style at the time. And then ever since then, all of the V2s have either had a strike of color or have just been straight up super loud in comparison. This is the first colorway of the V2 that has that reminiscence of the V1 colorways like the Moonrock and the Oxford Tan. And then when you couple that with what is in style right now in late 2018, earth tones and neutrals are in. So while they may not be the lowest stock number shoe or the most hype shoe compared to some off-white sneakers that are coming out or even the earlier releases of the 350 version 1s, these as a standalone shoe are my favorite colorway of the V2 so far. So is this a Kobe cop or a Kobe drop? In my opinion, this is a Kobe cop. Now I do wish Yeezy would eventually lower the price tag of these shoes because one thing that Kanye said was he wants these to be a shoe for the masses, for everyone. But when you think about it, the only shoes that have ever really done that are shoes like Converse and maybe even Vans, and those have a price tag of around $100 or even less. These shoes are sometimes three times that price, if not more. So if Kanye really wants to make a shoe for the masses, for everyone to wear, I think they need to make a lower price point while still trying to maintain most of the quality that these shoes have. Anyways, that's it guys. I hope you guys loved this video. If you did, please give it a like and do not forget to subscribe. I have lots more content coming your way. And I want to hear down below what shoes you want to see me review next and any feedback or comments you have about the videos. So, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.